Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Today we are in the northwestern part of Spain, Galicia, and today I am in Finisterre where in this restaurant they are grilling the fish that they catch 100 meters away. I mean, the sea is right there. We're gonna be catching octopus and so many more things. I am Jose Andres and this is Made in Spain. Let me introduce you a very unique pepper, the peppers of Padron. Padron is a beautiful town in the northwest province of Galicia. Today we are cooking Galicia style. All right, we have here an exceptional wine from the region of Galicia. You know, this wine is made with a grape called Albariño, and this wine is gonna go so well with these peppers of Padron, and especially this cheese. You see, the cheese I have here is called Tetilla, this cheese really melts in your mouth. So let's cut a piece. All right. And what we're gonna do with this cheese and these peppers, it's simple. Simple when you have great ingredients. So the only thing we're gonna be doing is cutting pieces of this cheese, stuffing the green pepper, and we have an astonishing quick tapa. Are you with me or no? So let's go. Great, and now what we can do is make a cut right here in the top, opening a door into the pepper, like this, you see? And we can do another cut all around the top of the pepper, you see? And the same one in the bottom. All of a sudden, what we are doing is opening a very unique door inside into the world of the Padron pepper, you see? This is giving me the option now to stuff every pepper. And you know what, many recipes tell you, Take the seeds out, discard the seeds. Why? The seeds actually, to me, they are unbelievable. They are so nice, so crunchy, so sweet. They have such a nice texture that don't touch the seeds, all right? So, let's go, one by one, simple. All right, and we can go now with uh, the second one, and the third, and the fourth. We're finished. A hot pan, good olive oil. This is gonna be a quick tapa. And we put this one and the other until all are in the pan. Beautiful, careful, because once you try tetilla cheese from Galicia, once, believe me, especially your kids will love it forever. A very quick tapa, very unique, some salt, Always, you need to sprinkle the salt from above. Why? Take a look right here. If I sprinkle from very close, you see? But if I sprinkle the same salt from very high, you see, one way the salt goes into one place. From above, the salt goes very spread out. Always sprinkle the salt from way above, okay? Beautiful, and I think the cheese is ready. Oh. Oh. Beautiful. What else can we ask in life? Simple ingredients, treated with respect, put them together. Good wine, good albareño, and you will always have a great dish. Oh. Mm. I think I'm gonna take you to Galicia right now, to Padrón, to see where these peppers grow. The story of the Padron Peppers began behind the walls of this building, the Monastery of Erbon, very close to the beautiful town of Padron. The seeds came from Mexico, the monks planted the seeds, and somehow they start producing this very tiny green pepper that is so sweet that all of a sudden become like a new variety right here in Spain. Today, when you come to Padron, beginning more or less May until almost October, you will find 
woman in every corner, in every street, selling you the peppers that they pick up with their two bare hands. And local bars and restaurants will be preparing this delicacy to tourists and locals alike. And you know, they are so popular that even the women that sell the peppers, they have a monument in their honor. As you see, peppers are a very serious matter in this land. I cannot wait to walk at the beginning of the spring just to see these tiny white flowers that actually they are very tasty on their own, but that obviously what we are waiting is when these flowers turn themselves into a green pepper, a tiny green pepper like this, the padron pepper. You know, these padron peppers are cut only when they reach this size, no before, no after. Why? If they become any bigger, they become very, very spicy and the color is not green anymore. It turns like a very dark brown that we don't want. You know, I think I'm going to go right now to a local restaurant to have a full tray all my own. Ah, some for you too. <laughs> and you know, these peppers of Padron that simply are kind of a pan fried in olive oil, sea salt, and they are like the best candy you can eat in the vegetable world. Oh, they are so good. With a Ribeiro, another traditional wine from Galicia. And I think that from here, Padron, I'm gonna take you right now to Santiago de Compostela. Nothing tells you about how vibrant a city is like visiting their market. And probably the market here in Santiago de Compostela is one of the best markets that you can see anywhere. It's really beautiful. Here, my very good friend chef, Marcelo, comes every morning to prepare his menu. Take a look at these camarones, these tiny baby shrimp, alive. They're translucent. You see? Wow. Look at them. And they're so sweet. We barely boil them. We them like popcorn, ah, but this is very expensive popcorn. Es pasada. So you see the scallop, it comes with this orange that you saw here, but what we really eat is this thing here, the big white midi part. These tomatoes smell so good. You know, with these tomatoes, he makes one of his specialties, the tomatoes kinder. Vamos al restaurante? Venga, coge la caja. I think it's time to go to the restaurant and start cooking. And those tomatoes that we bought in the market, they are clean, they take the insides, they put them in this kind of a pressure cooker, but inside is vinegar. Five minutes, six minutes, the vinegar kind of gets into the walls of the tomato, and all of a sudden you have a tomato that has all the flavor of the vinegar. It's kind of a self-contained dressing. He puts inside some tomato sorbet, a tomato mousse, a good olive oil from Catalonia, salt, tomato, tomato, tomato. Wow. And take a look at this scallop, which is the symbol of all the pilgrims that come to Santiago. It's so good that he doesn't need to do anything to it. He served at room temperature with this mousse made with this seaweed, which this seaweed is also so unique. Simplicity again at its best. A touch of a reduction of a vinegar of Pedro Jimenez. Bingo, the dish is done. And some good wine from Galicia to go with the whole thing. And you know, eating here is like an act of faith. It's no menu. Things change daily. Whatever Marcelo buys in the market, you've seen it. And he keeps coming up with dishes that are modern, but they keep meeting tradition. What else can you ask for in a restaurant? Esto es... ¿Cómo están estas vieiras? And you know, as soon as I finish this, I'm going to go to take you to somehow show you one of the most traditional dishes in Galicia, empanada gallega. Are you ready? Good, but I'm gonna finish this first, okay? <laughs> and Galicia, besides its food, its wine, its peppers, it's famous also for 
their pilgrims. Actually following the St. James Way, they will end right here in Santiago de Compostela, where the remainings of the Apostle Santiago are inside, in the beautiful, breathtaking Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. So signs of the importance of empanadas in Galicia are everywhere. We can see this is culture from the 13th century by men, women, eating an empanada. So the pilgrims will have no problem because almost in every corner, in every street, you will find a place that makes traditional empanada, like this one, Casa Troya. Oof, take a look at those traditional pastries and breads. Mmm, it smells good. Here, the master empanada maker, my friend Berna. You saw by now how she made the dough, right? Eggs, a little bit olive oil, a little bit water, flour. Simple. <laughs> well, it seems simple. And take a look at these, these onions with raisins. Queda muy bonito, me gusta. Ah, and this is the bonito. In Spain, we love the tuna bonito in olive oil. And this empanada, I think, is gonna be astonishing. Looks good, right? As soon as this is baked, I'm gonna eat a big piece. But you know what? I wanna show you a cake that she makes that is so, so good. Let's go. And this is the Tarta de Santiago with the cross here on top, made with sugar. Three simple ingredients, eggs, almonds, and sugar. Mmm. And the empanada. Qué buena pinta tiene. Bernard, muchas gracias. Mmm. What can I tell you? We're gonna go home right now. And I'm gonna show you how to make an empanada right at home. Adios. In my house, like in many families in Spain, you know, the beginning of the month, right after my father got the paycheck, was uh, very different from the end of the month. Let's put it this way. Was not as much food towards the end. So much of what we will eat had a lot to do with leftover food. You know, a little bit of the leftover chicken. So we're gonna cook this onion slowly until it's very nice, very caramelized, and very soft. I think this is the right moment to add the next ingredient, the green and red peppers. So we put some green peppers right here. Some of the red peppers too. And by now, I think it's safe enough to add the garlic, Why? Right? Well, the onion is, let's say, very wet because it has a lot of water. And you know, the garlic ain't gonna burn. And that's actually a very good thing. And we're gonna put one bay leaf right inside. And I think it's the right moment to put some salt. By adding the salt, we are gonna help precisely the onion to cry. That means to release the water quicker than if we didn't put the salt, okay? Right, the onion is already reduced, caramelized, as you can see, the green pepper, the red pepper already reduced, the garlic beautifully cooked. Now is the moment to add a very important ingredient in a Spanish cooking. Please help me out. Don't call it paprika, call it pimenton. The Spanish is smoked pimenton. And now, right following the pimenton, we're gonna put, why not, tomato. And we're gonna wait until this tomato reduces. Reduces until it forms kind of a marmalade with the onion, which is already very caramelized, and the tomato. All right? Beautiful. So now is the moment to be adding the chicken like this. You want more? We can add more, right? Great. All the chicken in. You know what? This stuffing is ready. As this cools off, let's you and I start rolling the dough. This beautiful puff pastry. So the only thing 
you need to do is to buy this and we're gonna start rolling with the help of this rolling pin until we achieve the proper uh, kind of thickness, all right? So far so good. Now we're gonna roll it over like this. We're gonna put it on top of a tray, kind of upside down. And we're gonna put it right on top of this pen like this. Center this dough out, perfect. And take a look because now we make some holes like this. You see? Perfect, so far, very easy, right? All right, so we put this in here. We put a little bit more in here. Perfect, and now with the help of a knife, we're gonna kind of uh, cut to make sure that it's even like this. You see, perfectly straight. And with the help of this egg, we're gonna paint the sides of this because this egg, what is gonna help us is becoming like a glue to attach the other layer, okay? Take a look. You put the finger right here, right? You fold over the dough over the finger. And you keep rolling the dough again over the finger. All right, and here we are finished. And now, very important, we need to do some holes on the top. Why we wanna do some holes? Very simple, because if we don't do holes, what happened? We are gonna have a steam of the water, of the tomato, of the, all the ingredients inside. And that steam, again, will make this empanada very soggy. And we want it crispy in the outside and to achieve a nice color. We can paint the top with the remaining egg like this. So this is ready to go into the oven, you know, more or less around 25, 30 minutes, 350 degrees, and it's gonna be so good. Already we ate empanadas in Spain, in Galicia. We've cooked empanadas right here at home. Now you know a lot about this very unique dish. Take a look. Take a look, the stuffing, the crispy dough, the chicken, the onion, you know? I wanna go back to Galicia, to a beautiful place called Finisterre. I am back in Galicia in one of my favorite places. This lighthouse right here actually shows the most Western point in Europe. For centuries, men thought that the end of Earth was right in this point. And that's where the name comes from. Finis Terre. Finis and Terre, Earth, the end of Earth. You know, also, this coast is known as the Costa da Morte, or the coast of death. Why? Because such a treacherous terrain with so many shipwrecks through centuries. And in those same waters, with the clean water of the Atlantic Sea just hitting on those rocks, we can catch today some of the most unique pulpo or octopus that you can eat anywhere. I, I always wanted to be a fisherman. This is called a NASA. And there they put, you see, the fish inside, and they hope that the octopus will come in. Man, it's hard work. Hey, one is more one. All right. Ah! Goes back in. Ah! Wow, going back down deep. And when they're small in size, they need to go back. Why? Because they need to keep reproducing themselves so we don't finish all the fish, octopus, and others from the ocean. Come on, come on. That's the Necora. We call this in America conch. Sea now. Sea stars, plenty of sea stars here. We send them back. So you see sometimes the NASA's, they break 
And right there, at the same moment, they have to be taking, making sure that they are back to normal. If not, the octopus will escape. Why? Because an octopus, if they can put the eye through a hole, they will be able to pass the entire body through the hole. We got one. Oh, more octopus, small ones. We put them back in the sea until they are really, really big. We don't want them. Oh, man. <laughs> So funny. And take a look at these suction cups. Really, they get a stick to my hand, you see? And now I cannot take it off. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, goes back to the water. Well, I can say we were lucky today. I think we got a good quantity of octopus. Hey, many of the sailors are going back to port. Okay, vamos. Venga, vámonos. Toca la, toca el pito. And right here in the town of Finisterre is this very unique restaurant, Tirado Cordel, where my friend Pepe is gonna cook this octopus for me. Pepe, ¿cómo estás? Aquí tienes el pulpo. ¿Qué hacemos? And the octopus always has to be boiled, at least is what the tradition says, in this copper pot. 40, 50 minutes later, it'll be very tender. And the pulpo is tender. Tender, but still slightly chewy. That's the best pulpo. He's gonna be preparing this pulpo with the traditional olive oil and pimenton, the paprika and the salt. And when he finishes this, uh -huh. They may hear something that is so unique. This is their specialty. Fresh fish, you scot where the octopus is. And what they do is they cover it in sea salt, like this one. And they put it right here on top of this charcoal. Different kinds of fish like this one, lubina. Probably my favorite, or the sea brim, or oh my god, so many different kinds. Wow, I think it's gonna be a good lunch. Little bit of good Galician wine, a Ribeiro. Wow, el pescado, the fish is here for this. <laughs> wow, and the food. So simple. Mmm, it's good. And you know, it's not bad way than to finish a day in Galicia. In a way, I'm gonna show you right now, you'll see. Sapos, corujas, moshus, e bruxas. This is the beginning of a conjuro, or a spell. Here in Galicia, when they make the queimada, they will say a spell to somehow put away the bad spirits. And you're gonna see what is gonna happen here. Some very good orujo, or a very traditional liquor in Galicia. Take a look at what's gonna happen with this beautiful Cathedral of Santiago in my back, in the square of the Obradoiro. And now is the moment to light it up. And having a glass of this queimada, I'm gonna say bye to you. I am Jose Andres, and this is Made in Spain. Mm, this is good. Adelantando que no adelantándote, el uno suma el número, número uno, pa' que el primero, pa' que con estar es suficiente para mí. Uno más que en uno menos, sumando, sembrando, pensando en lo que voy a hacer. Uno más, pero con nombre y apellidos, tirando de la cuerda siempre hacia adelante. Ay, 